Do you want an air gun to look more like a centrefire rifle? The only problem is it comes with a silly name. The Vort. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR on Air. Don't worry, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is still an air rifle and nope, I'm sure the sharp-eyed out there have noticed there isn't a separate air cylinder sticking out from under the barrel. The air chamber is surrounding the rifle barrel and gives it that high power rifle look to it. At this point, before anyone decides to make some comment about it's going to get you in trouble because it looks like a centrefire rifle, well, I can think of a few springers that would fit into that category as well. And if you're going to walk down the high street with this on display, then you're going to get exactly what you deserve. Not that behaviour like that helps the rest of us. Anyway, enough of that. This Vought, strange name, not sure why they named it after the inventor of Compound V from the Boys series, or maybe they didn't. If anyone has a clue where the name comes from, please let me know in the comments. The one thing I will say is that it has a fabulous feel to it. It is, a hun no, it's 1,120 millimetres, or a little over 44 inches long, and tips the scales at just 3.1 kilograms, or 6 pounds 14 ounces, unscoped. At this point, I will highlight they have added a starter scope in the box. Note I say starter scope. The 3 to 9 by 40 scope included in the box is really only enough to get you off the line, so to speak, because this rifle does demand something a little better, if not straight away, then certainly in time. And to me, it looks good enough to mount a nice piece of glass on top of it. The trick part about this has to be that barrel, with the cylinder and barrel combined. It is interesting that they state a preferred maximum fill pressure of 190 bar, with a true maximum of 200 bar, which in this day and age of 250 and 300 bar pressures appearing on a lot of new rifles, well, this maybe, perhaps, feels a little behind the times. But personally, I don't see anything wrong with it. Coming from the days when 200 bar was healthy and a respectable pressure for an air rifle. I suspect that because the construction of the air cylinder and its location, making it capable of 300 bar max fills and 400 bar test max, is likely to be very difficult. That said, I have tested this and found it was capable of around 65 full power shots from this 177 calibre version, so higher calibres are likely to give more than that, which is more than respectable to my mind. There's always a trade-off. The fact that this is regulated is certainly going to help maximise the shot count and keep them nice and consistent. Yes, I said regulated. The end of the barrel is threaded and is half inch UNF to allow you to add a silencer of your choice if you want to make this quieter. Certainly, you will need it a little quieter if you're going to be using this for a spot of pest control. But here is the strange part. You see, the screw cover on the end of the barrel is also the dust cover for the filler port. And if you fit a silencer, then you will leave this open to the elements somewhat. Now, it wouldn't be a big job to source a plug for it from some aftermarket company or other. And that would solve it, but the silencer will look a little silly. Moving back down the matte black finished metalwork, you come to the dovetail rail for a scope. This is a small rail and the correct scope and positioning will need to be balanced correctly with such limited space. There is also the opening for the magazine to fit, which breaks up the reducing space even further. The good news is, when using one of the two magazines supplied in the box, they sit quite low. So, it's not going to be an issue 
around the height of your mounts necessarily. Incidentally, the 177 magazine holds 10 rounds and they are simplicity itself. Simply drop your pellets in head first, rotate anti-clockwise, drop the next one in, rotate anti-clockwise, drop the next one and so on until all 10 are filled up. Nice and simple. Behind this area is probably the biggest bolt this side of a Mosin Nagant rifle. It's huge, <laughs> absolutely amazing. I love it. And it simply adds to that center fire feel. It really does feel amazing to use. <laughs> oh, wow. The stock is polymer and all black, but I do believe this is available in wood if you prefer. It is a simple ambidextrous shaped stock with some light stippling on the forestock and grip, but is almost more for show than real heavy grip factor. The book pad is rubberized and if you like your traditional rifle shapes, well, you're going to love this. On the underside there are two gauges. The front one is the fill pressure, but even though everything states in the manual the ideal max fill pressure is 190 bar, the gauge is in PSI rather than bar, and there's no colour coding to help either. So, a quick check on a bar to PSI calculator, thanks to Mr Google, and you basically need to run it up on the gauge to 2750 PSI. Alternatively, use the gauge on your filling source if it's accurate. Surrounding this gauge is a weaver rail for you to mount a bipod or the like. Behind this, working back to the trigger, the second gauge. This is for the onboard regulator. Then we come to the trigger and safety. The safety is an in-trigger safety, not unlike the Gamo GX40 or the new GX250, and is one that I'm really very used to and find easy to use, and I've never had a problem with it. Forward for fire, back for safe. The trigger is a two-stage item, but not adjustable. I found this one quite acceptable to use and wouldn't feel the need to adjust it even if there was an adjuster somewhere about it. Time to get this over the chronograph and see if it comes close to the claimed 800 feet per second. Hopefully it won't quite make it there because with the 8.44 grain pellets that I'll be putting through it, it would just be, I prefer a bit of breathing space for our 12 foot pound maximum laws here in Blighty and 800 is a bit too close. Well, it saw 791 feet per second, which is 11.73 foot-pounds or 15.9 joules, which is more than respectable and about as close as you really want to be to the 12 foot-pound maximum rule. I must say, the chronograph tests also highlight highlighted <laughs> how consistent this was with its regulator on board with a maximum spread of 4 feet per second. They claim 600 feet per second in the 2.2 caliber, and if this 177 is anything to go by, then I have no reason not to believe them. Time to get this out on the range and put it through its paces. I have dropped a 4 to 16 Orion scope on this, which is more towards the budget end of scopes, but it complements this rifle nicely, and it will help give it and me the best chance. 40 meters then. I love that. Here goes. Here we are. Beautiful day. That's not how it was yesterday. Yesterday it was so windy the wheelie bin finished up going on a speed awareness course. It was that bad. Anyway, poor jokes to one side. A beautiful day today. The sun's coming in at a bit of an angle which is a bit of a pain but not to worry. We've got the Vought. <laughs> what a name. Why Why would you come out with the name Vought? I have no idea. I've looked it up 
countless times. And one of the only things that really goes through my mind, if you've ever read Terry Pratchett's Eric, is a vault you demon. But let's not get too wrapped up in literary books, etc. The vault then, it's from Remington, which is all part of the same group somewhere along the line, probably a Snow Peak thing. It's really nice because it looks so much like a normal centerfire rimfire rifle. The bolt on this is massive. It feels fantastic, as simple as that. It's a little out of place, but I love it. It is just so enormous and you get this satisfactory feel every time you, you cock it. It's terrific. The magazines, the magazines are dead simple. The only problem I have, perhaps, is I've had a couple where it sort of jammed a little bit. It wasn't going in particularly smoothly. There is no single shot tray, otherwise I'd use that. After saying that, they're dead easy to load. They're very easy to just slot into the gun. They click nicely and in goes the bolt. So it may be user error. Often it is, isn't it? It's the idiot behind the butt that causes the issues most of the time. So and a Orion scope has been dropped on it. They do supply a three to nine by blur scope with it. It'll get you going. The only thing is, it is such a nice gun. It really demands something a bit better than the cheapo scope that they put in it. You will get parallax issues, as simple as that. But it's a get you started scope. Let's, let's be fair and honest about it. Okay, enough said. Nice gun, not too heavy. Let's... Uh, Let's put it down the range, 40 metres, see if we can hit anything, shall we? I've used one magazine to just play about with it to try and get it zeroed in, and we'll go from there. Now I've purposely let it uh, go slightly to the right, just so I can keep... Uh, using the bull itself as the center point for me to keep shooting at, otherwise I'll blow it out and then you won't be able to see anything, potentially. It's my fault. I think that's it. It is. There you go. It's not too loud. You can put a silencer on the end of this. It just looks a little strange when you unscrew the end and it doesn't all fit nice and smoothly down the rest of the barrel. It will make it a bit quieter. It's quite acceptable, really, I think, out here. I mean, it's echoing around the paddock. That is a nice thing to use. I still rest my case about the magazine. I think it could probably be a little bit more improved after saying that it's fine as i say it's probably user error you get two of those in the box as it comes so that's not a bad thing let's get down now i'll just go and have a look and see how it's uh, how it's looking i don't think there's anything to complain about there that particular one was my fault as i say i pulled it the rest of them pretty much the same hole your thumb will just cover the lot your finger will pretty much cover it, your fingernail I'm talking, in your little finger is going to cover most of those. 5p size, is that the same size as a dime? I'm not quite sure, it's about that. So there is nothing wrong with that. It's nice to shoot, it looks really cool, I, I really like it. Um, I believe, please don't quote me on it, I think they do this in wood, 
I, I like either of them to be fair, the wood would look really cool as well. Nothing wrong as far as accuracy is concerned, nothing wrong as far as use. Put a better scope on it, give it a fighting chance, which is just what we've done. I love the bolt, yeah, there's not a lot else to say about it. It's not expensive. Back to the studio. Now I enjoyed that. It feels really nicely balanced and traditional. <laughs> wow. Time to talk price then. You see, all this tech and alternative look and design is going to cost you around £460 UK, which for an accurate, full power, regulated rifle isn't a lot of money these days. I do think you will need to add on the price of a decent scope. The Orion I used is around £160. It is a really nice looking rifle. It feels nicely made. I would have liked to check out the wood version, but sadly there wasn't one around at the time that I was doing this, to see if the quality on the wood was as good as the quality on this one. It's worth checking out and putting on your shortlist maybe, and it is really enjoyable to use. Time to get your clicky fingers working then now. Please hit the like button, subscribe, feel free to share and click the notification alarm bell. Check out this little lot somewhere down there. And of course, the uh, guys at Airgun Forum. Check out the AAR website for all kinds of stuff. A big thank you to the guys at Vector Air for all their help, as always. And of course, to all you guys for supporting the channel. It is very much appreciated. Okay, comment of the week. Water pistols next week then, Andy? Standards are dropping, I'm afraid. That comment was left on the PP20, which is a really high quality and accurate, serious target pistol that would shake up some of the two and a half thousand pound pistols out there in competitions. Not quite sure how anyone would think the standards were dropping at all. Oh, and the water pistol part. Well, that may just give me an idea. That's it. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully I'll see you next week. Hopefully without letting the standards drop as well. Bye for now.